<laughs> All right, dude. That's he's my least favorite friend. All right, welcome back. <laughs> I, and I'm here with my most favorite friend, Eli Halpert. How do you do? Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, let's get serious. Right? Hey, let's get serious, all right? Uh, you just got back from San Diego. I just got back from San Diego. The land of the free, home of the brave. <laughs> City that never has wind. <laughs> City that never sleeps, I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I had a great time. The people suck, though. They always have. What That's, happened? Except for the, you know, no, yeah, San Diego people are just Last not. time I went to San Diego, I had laid with a beautiful, uh, actually a very beautiful woman. Yeah, uh, yeah. She doesn't no, talk to about, me anymore. <laughs> did she have a personality? No. Yeah, that's that's Whoa! that's California as a, as a state. It's beautiful, and it has no soul. Hold on. When you say personality, what do you mean by that? Was she boring? Did uh, she have anything to contribute to the conversation? Was she interesting? She's not going to see this, man. You don't have to worry. Listen, I just... <laughs> me? Worried? <laughs> what do you mean, dude? <laughs> what me worry? Uh, <laughs> I've never worried in my life. So, yeah, the, the uh, anyways, so great. how was it? <laughs> The shows went great. So a few months back, Laser was like, hey, if I take you on the road with me, can we have a beer? And I was like, you know, I quit drinking to be professional and to reach my goals in a sense. So And that didn't work, so you decided to relapse. No, it was working great. Sobriety was going great. But then I was like, you know, if I can drink to elevate my stand-up career, that seems like a good move, too. Because people don't realize, man, I didn't quit because I had a problem. I quit because... <laughs> I needed more problems. Dude, you can bullshit the audience, but you can't bullshit me, dude. Well, don't tell them. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I quit cold turkey. I had stuff in my house. I got booze in my house. And I was just like, <clears throat> just willpower like a steel horse cock. And I was just like, no, I'm done. And then I, I did it. And then I was like, you know what? I can slip back into the underbelly, into the underworld. And and hop back out of it because I I have too much shit going for me to actually become like a, an addict, <clears throat> right? So I was like, you know what? Sure, Laser, you take me on the road. I'll I'll have a couple drinks with you. And um, first time he was like, we're going to Louisiana. I was like, cool, we're going to Louisiana. Oh no, actually, uh, someone else filled in. Okay, maybe this guy's full of shit. And then he was like, hey, let's go to San Diego. And I'm like, all right. And I was like, just making sure that he wasn't gonna pull a switcheroo on me. And it, it happened. And I could tell that he was like, I guess, like maybe hesitant, maybe like, I'm not so sure about this guy. Like, I know he's cool because we hang out and stuff and all my friends like him and he seems to be doing well, but I, I could sense like a little bit of like reluctancy. I talked to you up the, the day before y'all left. I said, hey, Eli is uh, honestly smartest guy I've ever met in my life. Well... Look at what didn't say anything about your comedy though. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> so dude, how was the shows? How was it? Good shows. You, I heard you I killed crushed. it. That's what I was yeah. told. Yeah, I crushed. I did real good every single time. And you know how our friends are. We're all very vicious and mean to each other. So mm -hmm. if somebody says you did good, you had to have done good. Oh yeah, I, did, I was not missing a beat, man. It was it was great. Did some of you said some of your old college friends came out? Yeah, yeah. How, how did that go? <laughs> dude, I mean. God, I was really drunk for a lot of those years. Yeah, I don't like any of our old college friends. They they all came up and they were like, they didn't know how to socialize. And I'm like, how did you, how did we do this before? You know? Was, Knocking them back. Yeah, I was like, oh. Well, yeah, but you didn't have a time. problem though. <laughs> <laughs> you piece of shit. I had a solution. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, alcohol's, I'm, I'm thinking about quitting. Like one of my one of my friends came in after Laser finished the the fifth show. He walked up on stage, hits the bong, sets it down. It was a cool look. And then my friend comes in the green room and he's like, "Hey, was that weed you were smoking when you came out?" And he's like, "Nah, dude, it was coke." <laughs> and then Laser looks at me. He's like, "You're two for two now." Because oh, there's another person. Whatever, dude. <sighs> anyway, the the shows were great. You got any good stories? The hang was. But you, but you were, you said you were hanging out. I got dude. one good story. All right, hit me with the story. So after the last night, I, the the deal was, I told Laser, if we both crush, I will have up to four white claws with you. Did you stay under? I started out with a shot of Jameson, <laughs> <laughs> and then I started immediately double fisting seltzers. Yeah. How and many, then I had how about made, six how many did you end up with? Do you remember? About six or seven seltzers and about three shots. So you easily doubled what you said you were gonna do. And then two bumps of blow. 
And I got blow, fucked man. up. Yeah, well. And it was... No, but see, I'm just glad that you... Fun. I'm glad that you realize that you just don't have a problem. Because somebody that doesn't have a problem would, would go, I'm going to have four, and then they would have four, and no more. And they wouldn't have to quit doing drugs or drinking because they don't have a problem. Dude, you're just trying to offset your alcoholism onto me. <laughs> uh, yeah. What's the longest you've gone? Like seven days? You fucking no, I didn't. I went. I, <laughs> <laughs> you piece of shit. I remember no, when I was like you. I did two weeks. Two that's, months. That's good. Two months. Last, remember last when I had that heart attack? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Remember when you quit drinking and then everything was going great for you and then you started what drinking? What do you mean? <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? See, this is why I don't like talking to you about this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Things were not going better. Things did not get better. Yeah, well, you didn't piss anyone off. That's not even true. Dude, you're lost. You're a fucking... <laughs> you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> you're a liability. Yeah, well... But <laughs> if I had a dollar for every time somebody had said that, I'd have... 30 or 40 bucks. <laughs> um, so, dude, listen, let me tell you something, man. While you were gone, uh, my bathroom, the bathtub sprang a leak. <laughs> <laughs> I have to replace all the floors in my guest room. They all The one I was just in? They're rotten, dude. Yeah, yeah, the bathtub in there. It oh, blew man. out. And um, Who's, uh, whose fault was it? Well, technically mine. <laughs> See, I take accountability. Yeah, dude, I can respect that. I and I look, I'll do a lot, I'll do a lot of fucked up shit, but I'll be like, "Yep, yeah, that was me." <laughs> I don't Listen, know if that's better or worse, but I can admit when I'm wrong. I won't, but I can. I definitely do. I um, which is funny because, you know, every girl I've ever dated has always told me they're like, "You never admit when you're wrong." It's like, well, shit, bitch, I'm barely wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're like, you just want to be right all the time. I'm like, I don't want to be right. I just happen to be all well, the time. What, because I've done extensive sh research. Shouldn't... E <laughs> you're, like, you're arguing about like... <laughs> you're arguing about how she feels. You're like, I'm right. I've done extensive research. <laughs> no, I get, I get what you're saying. You've researched the human... The, According the to my calculations, mind. your feelings are wrong. Yeah, well... Well, a lot of times women don't know what they want. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyways, so that's what happened for me, dude. You you were gone, and uh, I my floorboards are f rotten. It's gonna be very expensive. I'm hoping insurance will cover it because the you know the tub fucking blew up. And um, why does Laser keep FaceTiming me? Why are you answering your phone in the middle? Because of the podcast? I it's not on. You're right. Hold on. Boom. Foot. See, you're right, and I, I'm wrong, and I'll admit <laughs> when I'm wrong. <laughs> Boom. Clip Boom. That. Ladies, I'm single. Uh, <clears throat> floors. No, my you're not. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> hey, don't tell anybody about her. Uh, Get yeah. back in the trunk. <laughs> the floors. The, my floors are fucked. The floor is lava. <laughs> <laughs> don't die. God, dude, you're a piece of shit. I wish I would have came up with that name first. Uh, Too bad you're busy dying. Why, where was I going with the floors? The floors leak. Yeah, everything in. sucks. That's what that's what happened. And then Tay and I had a rendezvous with this chick, and <laughs> dude, get, check this out. We're we're <laughs> well, yeah, that happened too. <laughs> Can't talk about that on the pod, <clears throat> dude. You're just not in alignment, dude. So we're we're with these chicks, right? This this new girl I'm talking to, beautiful lady, a strip club waitress, not a stripper, stepping up. You know how it is. <laughs> and we're her friend picks us up. We're driving to some party, and her friend's telling me she's from Europe. And I said, she, she's clearly Mexican. So I'm like, I'm like, you're not, I told her, she, you're not European. Don't culturally appropriate. Europe, you're down. I said, don't, don't culture. <clears throat> so I told her, I was like, don't culturally appropriate the, the, my continent. You know what I mean? And she goes, she turns around and goes, I'm Polish. I speak fluent Polish. Turns around and starts going, boopity beepity bop, and just <laughs> crashes the car, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's why that happened? Yeah. <laughs> And I just started laughing. I said, hey, do they drive like that in Poland? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Good thing they didn't have you driving those trains to Auschwitz. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Whoa, man. That's what happened in Poland. Auschwitz is in Poland. A lot of people don't know that. Dude, you ever... Actually, everyone knows Did that. you ever notice that this entire time I had the chair pointed towards you? No. I, I moved it. <clears throat> I think it should have been like this the whole time. Why? 
Because no, we actually, yeah, the the camera angles. Yeah, you don't see us both in both in the same shot. So, anyway, so sense. she crashed the car, and and then uh, and then the girl I was with started twerking on top of the car, and I just I don't know. Sometimes I think, what, what am I doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and then you posted it. Yeah, Laser told me it was a good idea. I got to stop listening to him. He has no idea what he's doing. He just throws shit at he the wall. He told me to go on stage barefoot. <laughs> he's like, just trust me, dude. It'll be great. And I was, I thought about it, and I was like, no. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> dude, he's like, just go out there and be like, there's a lot of pebbles around here. <laughs> dude, he's out of his mind. I don't think I've ever met somebody. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever met somebody that's as neurotic as him, other than myself. But I, I think someone got offended by my J three W jokes. I'm not. Sh- they came up after J3W. the show. J three W. What does that mean? Uh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, I don't want to get you demonetized. Do dude, I have something in my eye, man. I've been touching this whole thing. But Some guy came up. But it's both of us, which means it's hot in here. Hey. But this guy came up and was like, you're, you're, in San Diego. you're in San Diego. This is not Israel. And I was like, I don't know what that means. That is a true statement. We <laughs> are in San Diego. We are not in Israel. Right. I don't know what to do with that. Well, hey. What are you going to do, man? Listen, you come to a comedy show. <laughs> I'm going to say some things. If you don't like it, I'm going to punch you in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's why you quit drinking, because you kept beating the shit out of everybody. Hey. <laughs> they deserved it. <laughs> I was I was the enforcer of karma. Hey, it was part of a greater good. Did you did you watch the eclipse from a plane? Yeah. Yeah, that was cool, man. I was a little worried we were gonna land after it had happened, but we were still up in the air, dude. We were above the clouds. It was a bright blue sky, and then it got dark, and then it got blue again. That's not that cool of a story. Did but. you did you see it? No, dude, the plane's, <laughs> the top is covered. It was 1.30. It was, you didn't it was have it. You, did, you weren't next to a window? No, I, no, I can see out the windows. I can see out the windows. It was fucking cool. I got a nice video, although it doesn't really do justice. I did a little prayer, you know, because you when, when you're watching Native American videos. Dude, I got to say, women are usually wrong and don't know what they're talking about, but I think they're on to something with the moon stuff. I'm going to admit it. I'll admit it, ladies. Well, we already talked about this on that other pod we did. About the astrology stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I just close my eyes and I just I just express my gratitude to God and the universe. And I was like, I love you, God. You're the fucking man. I'm grateful for this opportunity to be alive. And I know that I'm just a little droplet of the source energy that has just been split into a bunch of little bits because we got fucking bored 10 billion years ago. And we we're like, all right, we got to create some other reality. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to be okay, here. Okay, well, good for you, dude, because I got attacked by my neighbor's fucking dogs. <laughs> really? Yeah, I went outside. I, so I was in the shower, and I was. Did they come I, on your property? I realized, holy shit, that it's the eclipse is happening. So I put a towel on and my little slippers, jogged outside. <laughs> st- forgot I didn't have the glasses on. Stared directly into it, and then got. A, and then the, my neighbor's dogs attacked me. <laughs> I could. I just imagine you like ah, and then the dog bites you like ah. They ah! were pit bulls, dude. It was like two, not like Pablo's size, but. Kaya, did, what do you when you say attacked? They, they jumped bite? on me. Did they bite? No, they didn't bite me. They Dude, if, I, if they would have bit me, I would have shot both of them. Yeah, we'd be sitting here. I'd be covered in blood right now. You wouldn't have showered <clears throat> hours ago. No, because that's part of this eclipse ritual: <laughs> killing your neighbor's dogs. <laughs> blood orgy. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the but the so you you've been what you've been watching the native. Uh, Dude, honestly, I stared directly at it and nothing happened. My vision is completely fine. Dude, you've never been able to see. <laughs> I've been blind this whole time. I'm, I'm not a man at all. <laughs> well, let me explain why that's funny for the audience. <clears throat> explain it. <laughs> you, had a, you had an ex-girlfriend that said, you're not the man I fell in love with. And I was like, you should tuck your dick in and then just drop your pants and be like, I'm not a man at all. Is that where that comes from? Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> I don't think that was me. Wait, wait, no, actually. That was Jared. No, no, no. Isn't he the one that did the dick tuck thing? Everyone does that. I don't think, I don't think she actually said that to you. But I was like, if she does say that to you, then do this. No, I've, I've definitely had 
multiple ex-girlfriends tell me you're not the man I fell in love with. Oh, well, then I told the story exactly how it happened. I didn't do the dick tuck thing. No, I said you should. Oh. And then we laughed. Hey, how about you be a little bit more fucking clear, buddy? Dude, I was so clear. People are going to watch this and be like, yeah, he said that. Hey, dude, check this out. I didn't show you this, but... Did, show you what... Did you see this yet? Is that a bite mark? No, it's a fuck... This? Yeah. Yeah, that happened to me in college. I'm showing you this. Wait, let's... That's a bite mark in, from college? Yeah, when that crackhead bit me. Dude, that's a... F- and it's still there? That looks fresh. No, it's just scarred because it was so bad. Oh, my God. Did I get infected? You've, I've never told you this no. story? Oh, dude. Sit back. So we're in SB in college. This is 10 years ago, probably. I think I, was, I had just turned 21. And we were at those apartments right next to the city college. We're drinking all night. We're going from one apartment to the next. And we're... Just walking down the sidewalk. Uh, not, didn't do any. We hadn't fucked with anybody all night. And this dude just jumped out of a bush. <laughs> and tackles my buddy Jasper. And just starts biting him and like hitting him. And he's like, what the fuck? And so Jasper just starts beating the fuck out of him. And the dude bit into his bicep. Like like hooked in. He couldn't get him off of him. So they go to the ground and he's his... <laughs> He's hooked into his arm, and Jasper's just punching him in the head. Dude, that's fucking terrifying. And I was trying to take him off, and he's like, he's sucking my arm! So I started kicking him in the fucking head over and over, and this dude would not let go of him, and I I kept kicking him harder and harder, and then he unclenched, like, (laughs) and then clenched into my leg. And then I had to just, we dude, me and my buddy, and this other dude joined in, too. We just hit this guy in the head, like, 40 times. (laughs) I can't believe I've never heard this story. Yeah, and and he still we still never knocked him out. And then um, I can't believe I've never seen that scar. You know what's funny? I that, thought I've uh, seen every interview. The next, <laughs> the next day, well, I, I left part of this out. <laughs> <laughs> so after we beat him up, I took his phone and I was like, "Yeah, fuck this guy," because you know I, there's like blood pouring down my leg. I was yeah yeah. I was at, at that point. You have the right to do. I thought a lot I had earned some things. reparations. Yeah. So. The next day, I, I wake up, and I got, like, 50 missed phone calls, and it's from Jasper, and he's like, yeah, the apartment fucking, the, uh, <laughs> the apartment management has, is asking us where this guy's phone is, because apparently that guy lived there, and he had, like, smoked crack or meth or something the night before, that's why he freaked out, and so they're looking for his phone, and I was like, I have no idea where it is. Well, they, they, they were, like, threatening him, and this guy showed up with a gun, <laughs> so I finally went back, and I, and I, um... Was this before I met you? I gave him his phone back, but when I saw him the next day, <laughs> dude, his whole head was so, so swelled up. <laughs> his head was like the size of a watermelon, and it was all purple. And he was like, man, fuck. He, he was one of those, like, he was like a white, like, like a wigger. He was like, man, fuck you, dog. I, I would have whipped your ass. I was like, dude, I will, I will flick your head, and it will pop. I was like, get the <laughs> fuck away from me. And then, uh, and then I never saw him again. But then, actually, I heard later on that that dude ended up having sex with a homeless woman, and he woke up covered in, like, weird slime. <laughs> All right, dude. I, I, I swear that's, that's hey, college all. is wild. <laughs> <laughs> The crazy part is, uh, that's a story we can tell on camera. <laughs> like, a number of stories. But yeah, yeah. You yeah. Said, I saw people playing beer pong in San Diego, and I was like, oh, it remi- reminds me of college. Well, you see, dude. like, a homeless guy getting the shit beat out of him. You're like, oh, that reminds me of college. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when, uh, can we tell the story about when we, when we did those quaaludes? Well, when you did the quaaludes? Yeah. Which is the first time I ever met you. Yeah, I, I ended up getting my hands on some quaaludes, and I uh, I was in San Diego at the time, and I was working at a mortgage brokerage. I was working like 50 hours a week. I had no social life. I had no friends. I had no time to hang out with people. All I did was work. <laughs> and uh, you came down and visited, and I was like, dude, stay a little bit longer. Let's fucking let's <laughs> hang out. Let's have fun. <laughs> and I think I just gave you some of my Xanax prescription. I used to have this doctor in, in college, and I was like, yeah, I got, like, panic attacks or whatever. And he'd be like, uh, okay. And yeah. he, would, he would always look like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then you would just write me a script for Xanax and Adderall. <laughs> and <laughs> I had a similar thing with clonazepam. Remember, I used to eat those, like, candy? Yeah, dude, it's insane that they just give those to us. I would eat, like, 15 or 20 of them at a time, which would explain my three-day blackouts. Anyways, continue you, the quaaludes. Wait, story. you know what's crazy, though? 
we're smart enough to know that we had to stop taking those. There's a lot of people that are still like, oh, my doctor oh. gave them to me. Oh, They're fine. Yeah, but dude, I thought you were the guy that had no problem. I mean, what are we, what are we talking about here? I don't have a problem. That's why I don't do them anymore. It's been years. <laughs> but when I do them, I do have a problem. So tell the story. Continue the story. I think I... I matched with some girl on Tinder, and I was like, hey, I'm with my do you, friends. You barely together. remember this. Why yeah, am I having I you tell the story when you were the one that fucking totally blacked Actually, out? I don't want to get into it. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry to Long remember. story short. I pissed on my head and, <laughs> <laughs> and tackled a clothing rack. We got kicked out of four bars in, a, in quite literally 15 minutes. And, and that's where I, I just was. I was walking around PB, and I'm like, oh, like I was oh, replaying yeah, the, yeah. all the scenes in my head with you. Yeah, the part when you pissed in your on your own face was, and then uh, that's probably one of the funniest stories. Well, that I was I can laying tell. down on like a driveway, and then I just pissed up in well, the air. Well, why don't we just tell the story then? I don't want to. All right, <laughs> I got another story though in San Diego. Remember, uh, I used to have this girlfriend. We're not going to get into who it was, but uh, we fought another couple in a sushi restaurant. <laughs> Wait, is it who I know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys are going to end up together, dude. No way. Uh, <laughs> I like... <laughs> no I was drinking, chance. I, I was drinking water and like an ice cube fell out and I like smacked it off the table and it landed on the floor next to some Armenian dude walking by. And uh, I don't know, we we're kind of giggling and stuff. And he came over to the table and was like, hey, you didn't do that on purpose, right? And I, was, I just looked at him, I was like, no, of course not. And then I was like, wait, why did I just respond like that? Like, I totally was just like, oh, no. I, I was just like, no, obviously, I, it was an accident. <laughs> and then I was like, fuck. And then I just stared at him, <laughs> smiling for like five minutes. And he was like, well, so you got a problem? And I was like, <laughs> I literally, I was just like, you got a problem? You want to go outside? <laughs> I smiled and nodded at him. I was like, let's wait till we get our food and then let's go outside. And then he got his food first, and they finished first before I got my food. So he gets up, and he walks out, and he has to walk past me to get to the front door. And he, like, stands like he's looking down at me because I'm sitting down. He's like, next time, why don't you be a fucking man to your word? And I just go, <sighs> and I stand up and just headbutt him in the <laughs> face and just start beating the shit out of him. <laughs> and then his girlfriend comes and starts trying to swing on me. And then my girlfriend grabs her by the hair and throws her back, and we're just beating the shit out of this couple in this sushi restaurant. And I'm like, all right, we should probably get out of here. Well, when in Rome. San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> I have a bunch of really fucked up memories in San Diego. San Diego burritos. Those, uh, what are those fucking things called? The California burritos? So good. Holy shit. It, the burrito I had with Brad. Do you remember the spot that he took me to? Yeah, we I went there. I sent it to you. We that place there. is so fucking good. And forearm. I'm not a big food guy. I eat chicken rollers yeah. and gas station hot dogs. Those burritos are good. Yeah. It's because they put the fries in them and they got that the, the salsa. Speaking of which, after this, you want to go to that taco truck right down there? Thought you'd never ask. The salsa <laughs> reminds me of back home. That's I'm not from <laughs> San Diego. <laughs> Ohio? <laughs> Oh, no, dude, I just went back to Ohio, and it sucked so <laughs> bad. I hated it, dude. I went back for my sister's 12th birthday and and uh, an Easter an Easter party, and, and it's just... Was she your half-sister? Yeah, 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 yeah. Her mom. Which half? Ugh, dad's side. Oh. <laughs> Why, you got something to say, motherfucker? She's going to end up with tattoos on her face. Oh, God, dude. I'm worried about her. Hey, that brings me up to, brings me, uh, to the, one of the things I wrote down on this piece of paper. Gentlemen, if you have a sister or, uh, or you're a father of a young lady, if you have a daughter, you really have to set a really very good example for what characteristics that a little girl should look for in a partner. I was talking to you about this the other day. Because when I'm around my sister, I go out of my way to be very gentlemanly and try to be, uh, you just, to, I don't want to be a dirtbag. I don't want her to grow <laughs> up and ever be attracted to somebody who's like me. Yeah. Kind of like me. Yeah. yeah. You have to impart a certain level of respect on them. So they are accustomed to being treated that way. Cause you notice a lot of people allow to be treated a certain way. And then that becomes part of their characteristics. Yeah. But more importantly, I want her to 
respect herself so that she treats herself a certain way. I don't want her to grow up to be like a stripper or have an OnlyFans or really be anything like any of the women that I'm attracted to because the women I'm attracted to are just as bad as me. Well, then you're going to have to roll solo for the rest of her birthdays. What do you mean? Can't bring your girlfriend. So you're probably going to be a stripper. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Well, fuck you, dude. But I Also, get, I, I, get I just want to say this. I have never dated strippers. I do not like strip clubs. I get lumped into your shit. And uh, what do you mean you get lumped in? People are like you and Gary just like strippers, and I'm like, that's not me. That's a Gary thing. What? Yeah. How dumb are these people? Well, people just assume if you're together, you do the same. People person. just assume that all my friends go to strip clubs. The I only person so, yeah. that goes to strip clubs with me regularly <laughs> is pretty much just me. <laughs> that's just my thing. You're just like thinking of all your alternate personalities. Wait, well, those I, are all me. I don't. I have. I just know all the girls in those places, dude. And I, and they. I just, I get a lot of free shit when I go there, and I used to know the manager at Red Rose, the day manager before he got fired for God knows what, but anyways, enough, hey, enough about, enough about business. Um, Yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying, man. I, I just need, I should probably stop dating strippers in general, although this new chick I'm talking to is, she's not a stripper. She's a cocktail waitress at a strip club. <laughs> You know, I'll allow it. Thank you. I'll allow it. Thank you. Because those are the ones that are like, you know, the guys will be like, hey, come on. And they're like, no, nope, sorry, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. Cause that's me. <laughs> hey, baby, come on. Dude, I've done some outrageous shit in strip clubs. I'm not going to name any names. But, dude, I've I've eaten... <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working like on, on the on the filter. I'm working on the filter. I uh, but strip clubs are a good time, dude. I like going in those places to to just relieve myself. I have know? a signature move when I go to strip clubs. Yeah, what is it? And that is, I will fold a dollar bill into the perfect paper airplane and throw it at the stripper. Yeah, we've all been doing that for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I used to do? I used to go to this strip club back in my hometown called and I was 17. I had a fake ID and it was a private club. So you could bring in your own alcohol. You just had to be like a member. So you'd pay a monthly fee, right? And you could kind of just do whatever the fuck you wanted. And I used to go up to the stage and shove ones <laughs> in the crotch of my pants and turn around and lay backward on the stage and have these girls sit butt naked. These were private clubs, so they were butt naked. They would sit their pussy butt naked on my face and eat the ones out of my crotch. How old were you? 17, 18. <laughs> I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> Dude, I have a theory. Seriously. I have a theory that whoever you lose your virginity to or in what capacity you lose your virginity... It influences your sexual inclination for the rest of your life. For example, I love strippers. I lost my virginity to a stripper when I was 18, late bloomer. But nonetheless, <clears throat> a mutual friend of ours whose name we're not going to say out loud, musician friend of ours, lost his virginity to a larger woman. And he still likes, likes large women. There's a lot of, there's a lot of fucking... Uh, there's a lot of... Examples. What about you? Does that apply to you? Um, I lost my virginity to a girl that ended up joining the Navy <laughs> in the back of a Toyota Yaris. So I can't you lost, agree. I lost my virginity in the back of a car too. Nice. Yeah. Actually, I mean, she was her like her physical appearance. I'm I'm still into that. She was like she a skinny blonde. No, she didn't. Ah. Well, okay. Well, maybe it doesn't apply because that's your thing, right? Yeah. Hey, how did that dating show go? The second girl I had sex with had big boobs. Oh, the dating show. Oh, <coughs> that was fun. How was it? I still haven't watched it. I'm going to. Relax. <clears throat> they edited out the funniest parts. Dude, were you saying stuff that was too fucked up? Yeah, about the J3 dubs. Okay. I also think they edited some of the stuff out of mine that while it was the some of the funniest parts, although I think mine was fucking hilarious. And it was, I had a good time doing it too. Uh, I think, I think that the parts they edited out were good because I said a couple of things that could have uh, gotten a couple of my exes very upset with me. And I have a, I have a knack for doing that, that I'm trying to stop, you know, just running my mouth in general. 
I really am. I, no, I was literally thinking about a bunch of stuff that I shouldn't say. Uh, and, and the other thing that they edited a bunch of shit out was, uh, well, not a bunch, just a handful of things about uh, child support and my baby mama. I made a couple of remarks. And I, dude, because you know what? I'm so ADHD or, or whatever that when I'm in front of a camera in the moment, I forget that it's recorded. And I, I just say whatever fucking comes to my mind that I know will make people laugh. Yeah. That's why I get in so much trouble. Dude, people... That's what I do on stage. People think that I'm trying to say crazy shit to, like, be a provocateur or piss people off or whatever. And I'm, I'm really not. I just <laughs> have a, like, lack of self-control. Seriously. Yeah. I don't mean to... Up, I don't even really mean to upset people. I like, I like having uh, deep philosophical conversations more than anything. You know? <laughs> what you almost fooled me no me too man i was i was just talking to this girl right before this and i was having a long talk with her and it was not i wasn't being silly at all i said something very interesting that she she said was like one of the most profound things i ever said that i'm going to share with you you've probably heard me say this how trust is an efficiency tool because if you trust someone if you trust me and i tell you the sun is 7.3 billion miles away not true i just made that up then you can go, okay, that's a fact that I will absorb now. Where if you don't trust me, you're like, hang on, let me make sure. You take it out, you Google it. You're like, that's not true. Or it, maybe it is true. It is, let's say it is true. You, you Google it. Now, if you have to do that every time, that adds up. The amount of time you have to spend verifying if someone is telling the truth or not is a lot of work. Where if you just trust someone, you can just kick back. Like, I never have to worry if you're lying to me. I'm just like, yeah, I, I trust you. So it's easier. It's an efficiency tool. That is that is very wise. I've got no smart ass rebuttal to that or anything. It's probably because you trust me. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I like, <clears throat> I, I think uh, a lot of the thoughts I have and a lot of the things that I want to say are offensive. Yeah. I don't enjoy offending people. I don't enjoy upsetting people and hurting people's feelings. Unless I'm like angry and then, you know, everyone gets in that zone. But like when I'm doing comedy, when I'm posting content, I don't want to rile people up. I accept that it will happen. I don't want to stifle myself and reduce my personal happiness and personal expression and creativity at the for others at the expense of myself. And there is a certain limit, like there's certain things that I wouldn't post or say right. because it would hurt other people more than it would make me feel good. So there's like a a balance there. But overall, I mean, yeah, I just like having a good time. <clears throat> I'm still thinking about what you said about the, the trust thing. That's very, that is very insightful. What made you think of that? Uh, this girl was telling me how she, like, <coughs> was doing some business stuff, and then she took a trip somewhere, and she has this business mentor, and she lied to him about it, and he found out, and I'm like, and that relationship's fucked now. I don't see any point in lying. Lying, the truth always comes to light. Almost every time I've ever cheated, I've been caught, or generally speaking, been caught. You know, they'll catch four out of the six times. <laughs> And I, I just, I just imagine what if your girlfriend was like, have you been talking to other girls? And you're like, I plead the fifth. Cause that's not lying, but that is a admission of guilt. Well, not in a court of law, but so, anyway, socially, the, any, any time that you lie, it'll, it'll come back full circle. Almost always. I'm not going to say every time because absolutes are, it's impossible to say that. But in relationships, it's for sure very difficult to get away with stuff long term. And and even then, I feel like if you're cheating on a girl or if a girl's cheating on a guy and it's been a long time, like they've been doing it for a long time. If someone's been cheating on their partner for a long time, they're either they've, they've either been caught before or the other person in the relationship secretly knows and won't admit it to themselves. Yeah, I don't know. I've never cheated on a girl. I've just broke up with them and got back with them after, which does the exact same amount of emotional damage, it turns out. Arguably worse. Yeah. I don't know why I said arguably worse. It's the exact same thing. 
It's just like a polite way of doing it. Yeah. But I told a girl that, and she's like, no, that's not true, because I would, I would rather that than be deceived. But I think okay, that's, okay. That's, why, that's why being cheated on is so traumatizing, because when the trust is broken, the reality is shaken up, and they're not sure what to believe anymore, and they have been existing on such a concrete path that has now been diffracted into meaningless roads leading to nowhere. Not to mention that for the rest of their life, they're going to th- secretly think that whatever guy they're dating is doing something behind their back. Which they are. Always. I don't know about that. I'm sure about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Isn't it funny how you can screw over hundreds of women in your life and then one woman will come along and just fucking wreck your shit. It's very weird karmically speaking. Yeah, I'm still waiting on that. <laughs> yeah, but that hasn't happened to you yet? No. It's happened to me three or four times. I also think maybe uh, I, due to ignorance mostly, I've treated partners in my relationships much worse than most people have. I don't do it on purpose. <laughs> what? I'd edit that out. <laughs> I'm leaving it in, dude. I'm an honest man. No, I've, I've done a lot of work. Hey, last time you left it in, you had a kid that you lost custody of. <laughs> hey! I'm editing that out. No, nah, I'm not going to. I don't, I'm not editing anything out of this this time. By the way, this is the second time we've tried to record a podcast. The first, the first time we did. Uh, We're in good spirits. By the way, I did not not turn the camera on. It, it, fuck, we had like 10 minutes of footage. And it just shut off? I think that... Uh, Wait, think hang on. I want to say... I think, some, I think something happened. Probably good that Lord. fourth dimensional the, entity. The good Lord, Lord saved us because we said some fucked up shit on that <laughs> one. Holy shit. It wasn't that bad. Nah. Was... But yeah, I, I think I haven't gotten like my heart broken because I have such a strict high standards. Like I'm so quick to cut them off. If they, if they like pronounce one word wrong, I'm like, I'm never talking to you again. Yeah, you're, which, gonna, you're which never going to People get. say that, like, that's not good. You're going to end up alone. But the only people saying that are women that want to date me. And then when I, and guys, well, yeah, that's pretty smart. It's very interesting. World yeah, is- but the inverse doesn't affect women because if a woman has extremely high standards and re- rejects every guy over and over again, eventually they get to the point where they can't have kids anymore. And then they're, they're, there's no real reason to, to marry someone if you're not going to have kids so that they do end up being alone. Guys have a lot more, a lot more longevity in terms of the duration they can reject women. That brings me to another point is that the world is a lot easier to understand if you think of it in terms of men and women, which everyone wants to say that we're all the same. Like, yeah, that's nice. It's cute. But like literally fucking bullshit. it, it, It literally makes everything easier to figure out. If you're just like, okay, well, this person's a woman, so I'm going to approach it like this. This person's a man. I'm going to approach it like this. Since I I didn't do that until like a couple of years ago. And I was like, oh, just treat everyone the same. And then someone told me that like, you can't treat everyone the same. You got to treat women was it, like let me ask dogs. You this. Was <laughs> good girl. You pet them, give them a little treat, take them on walks. Did an older man tell you that? Yeah, that's uh, something very similar happened to me. An older guy was like, "Hey, your generation has been tricked into treating women the same as they treat men, and y'all think everybody's all the same, and there's no real um, gender roles." And when I realized that that's complete bullshit, I started being able to handle women in relationships better. Except for me, it was not very long ago. It was probably about a year ago. Around 30. Yeah, but I used to when get- you turn 30 is also when you were like, holy shit, I'm a grown man. Yeah. <laughs> I can't act like a little fucking asshole anymore. And then that's when I started feeling guilty for all the women I did wrong. Yeah. God, it's, karma's real, man. It sure is. But it's not always in this lifetime. You might be reincarnated I- as a... Battered woman. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, you ever think of that? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> that is a fucking... Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've never thought about that. I always thought I'd just be like reincarnated as like a cow or something. No, dude. You might be a... I could be reincarnated as like the type of woman you that... Could be re- re- you could be reincarnated as a... Double amputee, Down syndrome, sex slave. 
in a dungeon on an island oh. somewhere. Okay. <laughs> You'd prefer battered woman? You. <laughs> See, I'm going to no, be reincarnated. I, I, I'm going to be reincarnated as a fire dragon. Dude, a, an, a, a quadruple amputee sex slave would, would not be bad at all because you would have no other fucking... That'd be, it'd be better than just sitting there with nothing. <laughs> you know? You think that the lack of ability would reduce your ability to be bored? Well, if you couldn't move and you were just a, a torso and a head, and I'm imagining the sex slave thing is you're either, as a woman, being... Uh, impaled over and over by, again by uh, some sort of dildo machine or... Dude, I think amputees are probably more a, positive about life. <laughs> or if you're a guy, you probably just... I don't know, actually, now that I'm thinking about... How does that work? If you're a quadruple amputee, do you still keep... Do you still have a wiener? Are you just a torso with a cock? Well, you'd be a woman in this hypothetical. Oh, but because yes. I was an asshole to yeah. women? Mm -hmm. That's how that works. Yeah. I'm well, not as bad as I think I say I am. I just have a lot of guilt over a handful of serious relationships I was in. And really then, I don't even think I should, because those bitches were crazy. I don't feel guilty about anything I've ever done. <laughs> Everything I've ever done, I was right about at the time. And I don't remember a lot of it. <laughs> You're going to be reincarnated as like, as like some mentally retarded person. <laughs> oh, I'm already there, brother. So you don't have any remorse about anything bad you've ever done? You're that's a psychopathic trait. Hey, well, you say hey, takes one to know one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, speaking of psychopaths, this is this is something I want to get serious. No, about. actually, seriously, man, dude, my don't ruin my transition. <laughs> I was literally that was a perfect transition. Go ahead. My biggest regrets in life are not punching people in the face. Continue. That's what you interrupted me for. Yeah. I fucking hate you, dude. <laughs> I regret not punching you in the face just now. <laughs> dude, but I'm glad I did that one time, you piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, that was the worst Christmas ever. <laughs> not okay, for me. so so I'm gonna need to pull up some statistics for this. But uh oh this this is excruciatingly kind of disgusting, and I think it is indicative of a larger problem in this country. Okay? You ready for this? America has more serial killers than any other country in the world by far. I'm going to give you the top five countdown here. You ready for this? All right. Number six is Japan. 96 documented serial killers in Japan. I Italy is number five with 97. Canada, number four with 106. South Africa, number three with 117. England, number two, with 166. <laughs> and the United States is number one with 3,204. 3,004? 3, 3,204. 3, it's, it's over 3,000 more than the second most country. Okay. That's, that's weird, man. Honestly, my first thought was MK Ultra. That's exactly what I thought, too. <laughs> because it, it only makes sense. Because a lot of the serial killers in the United States have been... It's been confirmed that they were victims of the MK Ultra experiments. Like Charles Manson and Ted Skazinski. Exactly. So I think that there's something to that. Also, they are all pretty much white countries... Or Western countries, because Japan, while it is Asian, is a Western capitalist-influenced country. I don't know what that role has to do with it, but I do think that it's... It, the abnormal number of serial killers in the United States, same with gun violence, it's got to be... This is... I, I think it's the result of CIA and all the mind, con, mind control experiments and drug experiments that they've been doing on people... I definitely agree with that when it comes to the mass shooting stuff. But as for serial killers, I did some research also that aligned with my hypothesis on... So, you know how, like, the elites are, like, sacrificing babies and stuff and doing, like, black magic for, like, powers or whatever? Okay, sure. I will, I will I'll humor that. You're a little further down the rabbit hole than I am, but I'm, I'm for the sake of this argument, I'll agree with you. So, Ted Bundy, the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez... Jeffrey Dahmer, like, most of these guys were doing some kind of, like, black magic ritual sacrifice when they were killing their victims, and no one ever talks about that. And it's the same shit the elites are doing. And so... 
I, I don't I don't know <laughs> what to do with that. I'm just saying, You're just like, throwing it out there. Yeah. I don't know, man. So maybe O. Dude, I think that... I wonder <laughs> if Israel's up there. I think that there was no... I, I didn't see them in the top 10. Uh, I think that it's possible that the CIA could be running experiments to make people in the United States more violent and more out of control in order to create more... Uh, to pad statistics and create serial killers and mass shooters and stuff like that in an effort to scare the shit out of people so to, they can cr- uh, take control of the yeah, country yeah. And, and, and take <laughs> out, remove laws that promote liberty and freedom. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, there's people killing people out there. We got to build walls and those, around and your none, house. Of, none of those other countries have um, laws set in place to protect freedoms like the United States does. And I think the United States is the last bastion of freedom in the world. Moving into the, into the new world order, so to speak. Because a lot of those other countries already took guns. They already have a police state. Yeah. They already, they already are in a surveillance state. The United States is cr- trying to create like a panopticon of sorts through the CIA, I think. Yeah, I mean, we are the closest to free speech of any country. I don't think we truly have free speech. Well, I think we used to. More so, at least. Yeah, or maybe we just didn't realize how fucked things were. And, and it took a lot of people becoming famous to tell us what's happening for us to realize that it's happening like what do you Elon mean, like, Musk talking was... about how the Democrats have been censoring Twitter and well that was I've known a lot of people have known that for a long time I guess it, but he officially said it once he bought it so then oh yeah he made, he proved it there's there's more validity to it once he said what do you mean he proved it he released all the, oh yeah he released the I mean he had the, the whole backlogs files. of Twitter and he was like oh this is happening they're talking to the FBI they're well like, Meta does that too sacrifice. with Facebook and Instagram and all that yeah they were talking to the fucking FBI that's fascism that is the definition of fascism yep when t- when Elon Musk released those Twitter files and it showed that big tech was in bed with the FBI in order to swing elections. That is the definition of fascism. Government and corporations combined. That's exactly what Mussolini was promoting and created and then what Hitler was trying to mimic. They, the FBI and those big liberal tech companies are quite literally Nazis. They're Nazi fascists. Which doesn't seem like such a bad thing anymore. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. I'm man. not going to expand on that. All right, I'm tired. We got to end this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, anything else you want to talk about? We fucking anything? follow me at Octavius Thunder. Ooh, follow me at Octavius Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> well, people are going to remember your plug now. You're yeah, welcome. Thanks, dude. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> All right, later, assholes. <laughs> <laughs>